All right, hello and welcome to our next edition of South Florida Magic. Commentating, I'm Ryan Burke. And I'm Peter Kaloyan. And today's feature matchup includes uh, Blue White Stoneblade versus Maverick. Here we have both players. They've done their starting dice rolls and they're drawing their opening hands. So who do you like in this match? Uh, I'm going to root for the underdog here, and I would really like to see Stoneblade get things done early in the game. Which is what he'll have to do in order to get through this matchup. It's like our Maverick players mulliganing. Yep. Uh, as far as opening hands for Maverick, what what do you think would be optimal against Stoneblade? Um, well, I think if they can, as long as they're leading with a one drop, they're doing good. Um, a Mother of Runes is very good because it nullifies all future Swords of Plowshares. So he either has to waste a Force of Will on it or he has to waste his first Swords of Plowshares, which lets every other creature through. Uh, Noble Hierarch is very, very good as well because it's just going to get a very early Knight of the Relic Quarry or uh, any number of his other threats. Uh, it allows him to basically Zenith for X, whatever the creature's mana cost would be because he's ramping that much quicker. Um, even a Zenith for zero is really good just to get him ahead on the board. And that early Mother of Runes, too, that'll shut down uh, a turn to Stoneforge and a Batter Skull. Because with Mother, he'll give it pro black every turn. He won't be able to get any leverage. That is true. No life will be gained, no damage will be done. It's almost like a null card, just sitting dead on the battlefield. That is one thing a lot of players don't realize because they just see it as an artifact when it actually is a black creature. That's true. Zero, zero, black germ creature. So we have uh, our Maverick player here, mulliganing to six. Up, oh, almost seven. And opening hand for Stoneblade looks like he has a Force of Will. It looked like he has a Judge promo GT sitting on top. Well, Savannah in a Noble Hierarch for turn a, one. There's a good start for the Maverick player. Yeah, not bad at all. No Force of Will on that. Stoneblade draws a Jason Mind Sculptor, does a Misty Rainforest, passes this turn. And here's that early ramp you were talking about, right into Quasali Pride Mage. Fortunately, it looks like it wasn't really ramped. It was just another land. As doesn't look like he has another land drop for the turn. Otherwise, he probably would have played it. Yeah, that's true. So we have a fetch here. Looks like he fetched for. Looks like a tundra on our stone blade side. <clears throat> and that's the beauty of legacy. More than half the game is spent shuffling. <laughs> and taking one damage from your fetches. And we have an early brainstorm, which I don't exactly like as, an, as a move at all from our Stoneblade player. I mean, really, what would he? What do you think he would be stacking his hand for? Well, you might want to find a, a blue card he wants to exile if he's going to force this that he doesn't care as much about as the other ones that were in his hand before. Um, I feel, okay. It looks like he's getting rid of Jace, which I don't know. I don't like that move I, either, I, to I be honest. I think that's a much better card than Snapcaster because that can just take over the game in itself. But Yeah. The great thing about Jace is not only does he stack your hand, he unsummons, he also wins the game. And it's also we have life totals at 18 to 20. And we have both players shuffling. Well, not shuffling, but checking their hands. Maverick player draws. We have an attack from a noble hierarch, it looks like. And we have, yeah, that's two right there, right, with Exalted? So take him to 16? Mm -hmm. It's just one. Uh, the Noble Hierarchs is zero one in and of itself. Okay. That's right. Quasali Prime Mage has Exalted, does it not? That's true, it does. Okay. Green Sun for zero. It looks like he's going to be searching up a Dryad Arbor. Yep. And like a pro, he does not put Green Sun into his library. I mean, into his graveyard. He puts it right on the bottom of his library. Drops right over past his turn. It looks like he dropped that Mishra's Factory. Even though it seems as though the Maverick player is stumbling in this game, at this point, the the blue white Stumbling player hasn't really capitalized on the fact that he's he's ha he has a slow start to this game, which means the Maverick player at this point just has a handful of gas. Yeah. Uh, he's just if if he's just trying to force a will and counter everything he has going for him, he's Maverick player is going to quickly take ahead of this game. That's true, too. He won't be very much bothered by the counters he has because that, that deck just keeps going. It keeps coming. It keeps tutoring. And we have a Mother of Runes. 
<clears throat> There's so much utility in the deck, too. It just it keeps coming. He has something for everything. And it looks like he's doing a mana leak to that Mother of Ruins, which is not a bad idea at all. Past his turn. Looks like he drew... Basic Island, Full Art Zendikar Island. I think if uh, he hadn't exiled that Jace early on in the game, at this point he would have had a, would have been able to lay a Jace on the board this turn and just would have been able to seal the game, I feel. Absolutely. <clears throat> if anything, if he, had, if he felt challenged by him attacking with his Dryad armor, he could simply just unsummon it at that. Mm -hmm. And really, pinging one for Jace every turn is not enough to cancel the threat. And it looks like we have a Stoneforge into a Jite. Not yeah, bad. I, I hear that's good. I wouldn't mind uh, minusing one Jace to return on points land of his hand. Yeah, not at all. Passes the turn. Looks like he drew a flooded strand. And he drops the Mistress Factory. <clears throat> yeah, we have a Snapcaster on the board with a GT. Now, he's putting the GT on, and he's going to try to attack. The Maverick player is not going to let him get that hit in. Swords of Posture is no. Although, how damaging would uh, a Jite uh, do to Maverick, do you suppose? Jite would be very, very good here if it got a hit in because he would be able to essentially take out two of the Maverick player's lands with just the two counters it gets in the first hit. He'd kill the Dryad Arbor and the Noble Hierarch. That would be a big setback. Oh, there's oh, an Elspeth. This game is going to end very quickly, I feel. Elspeth, arguably the best Planeswalker. Second only to Jace, and really I think the two kind of teeter and totter for second and first. The nice thing about Elspeth is whenever it's between Jace and Elspeth, one-on-one, -on -one, Elspeth's always going to win. Oh, yeah. I mean, the plus three, plus three flying itself is ridiculously good. <clears throat> oh, but he's regretting XI on that Jace right now. It looks like he's going to activate yeah, the Mistress quick. Factory. Okay, it's kind of an odd move. Yeah, maybe he's going to try to try to zap the soldier. Well, no, that's going to trade with that. He's going to try to zap Dryad Arbor maybe to slow him down. Although, at this point, I think it's too late. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't really like how the Stoneblade player is taking this one. The nice thing about at least that, that move in this game was he did, he did manage to get some counters on the G, which is... Once you get that, once you get the G going, it's usually very good. However, it beating a planeswalker in of its own is usually not going to happen. If anything, he can kind of stagger well, Elspeth's soldier generation. But if he puts out another creature, it's really not going to do much. I don't think. I think what he should have done there is he shouldn't have let him on tap. He should have killed his noble hierarch and his dryad arbor before he even let him have his turn. Just destroying two of your opponent's lands plus getting rid of exalted is a very big deal. It's, He's not going to be able to fight through that army of so soldiers that Elspeth's going to be pumping out just yet. He needs to capitalize on the fact that stumbling his opponent in, in off two lands is a very good thing. It's the best thing he could be doing at this point in the game. Although at this point it doesn't really matter because our Maverick player has dropped a Gaia's Cradle. And he's probably explaining how he's just generated like a ton of mana right now and what he's going to cast. Not yeah. bad. I hear that's pretty good in a green-white deck, right? Yeah. Rampling Gaia's Cradle. <clears throat> so it looks like he's going to drop Sword of Fire and Ice, which I think he'll probably immediately equip. So it looks like they're kind of having some kind of... Oh, okay, he's going to remove the counters, maybe in response to the equip... I don't. I don't really. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I can't really follow what's going on either. I mean, maybe he's responding to the sword coming into play, so maybe he can't well, even. He just legend ruled out the Jite. Yeah, I heard when that was in standard. That's what a lot of people played Jite in their sideboards to do, just to counteract Jite. Although I heard Kamigawa block was atrocious to play in. Now that he can handle that Jite, I don't see how this game's gonna last much longer for the Stone Blue player. No, he doesn't really have much going on. Flooded Strand and a. Force of Will in hand, draws another land. This game is very much over. Next turn, I'm predicting an equip of Fire and Ice, plus three, plus three, flying, and swing for huge. So 
So we're tapping that guy's cradle. Equipping the stone forge. <clears throat> Looks like he's plus three, plus three flying. Swinging for huge. And the stone blade player scoops him up. And scoops. Two scoops. So round one went to Maverick. All right, so we have round two of Stoneblade versus Maverick. Our Maverick player coming off of a very strong win, as seen in round one. As uh, as both these players are playing fair decks, I'm assuming that the Stoneblade <laughs> player is going to be on the on the play. <laughs> what constitutes a fair deck? I oh, wonder. they're not playing Dredge. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, it's always cute whenever a dredge player thinks they're being so funny by rolling the dice to see who goes first. They do it every time, and then they always giggle. I'm going to draw. Ha <laughs> ha, I tricked you. They do it every time. It's like the Stoneblade player who went for a mulligan. One of the many reasons to hate dredge. As if there aren't enough already. Aside from it being a, what I feel is a garbage, gimmicky-ass deck. There's stupid little quirks and tricks that they love to do. Doesn't seem like you have a bias towards this at all. Oh, no, no, not at all. No, it's, it's totally not, you know, Fisher-Price, my first legacy deck. You know, it's great. And it's cheap, too. That's what's really great, too, is it's, it's so cheap to make that everybody just jumps right into legacy with Dredge. <laughs> Excellent. It's great. And you know the thing, too, is because of that, it's, it will always be around, and you'll always have to play against it. And it's going to get you every time. It's true. Well, that's why I'm excited for Dark Ascension. Because of the Graph Digger's cage, it just completely, I think it shuts down the entire deck. It does. It's very good against them. All right, so we have, uh, looks like a mulligan from our Stoneblade player. Going to six. <clears throat> and then, uh, looks like our Maverick player is angrily pointing his finger. Making some kind of really valid point, I'm sure. Okay, so we got a Snapcaster. Looks like a Tundra... He's got two lands there. Well, um, he's going to keep. He's got a bunch of blue cards and a Force of Will. That's good enough to keep, I think. Right? I mean. Well, Force of Will is very weak in this matchup. I, I'm curious as to what was in his sideboard that he uh, decided to leave. It really just feels like a rule of thumb. Like, you're playing blue, you're like, I got some blue cards and Force of Will, keep it. Oh, Force of Will, right there. I mean, see right here, though, now he's down to. 19. He's down to four cards total. Goes to while 18. his opponents still on, you know. Although, Seven cards. I would say uh, Force of Willing a first turn Noble Hierarch is not bad. I think he's probably hoping that he uh, stumbles his opponent like he, his opponent was stumbling last game. Yeah, because if he's really banking on that to provide some early mana, maybe he can. it'll buy him some time to establish board position. But I completely agree with you saying how he's two for one himself, basically, in a deck that's known for its resilience. So we have a weird sort of strange cut going on. And we have our Maverick player doing a really healthy shuffle here. It's you know it's good to not trust your opponents these days, you know. <laughs> really healthy shuffle every time. We got a brainstorm, which I don't like as well on the first turn. I don't know, man. I think that he uh, should have played his Tundra first. That way he could have uh, shuffled away some of those cards with his Misty Rainforest. That's true, too, yeah. I mean, I really like Brainstorm as a reactionary card more than anything. I, I really do not like seeing it early in the game. Like Another, another one, too, I don't like is an early, an early Ponder, like a turn one, turn two Ponder I really don't like as well. So it looks like we have a, a fetch here from our Maverick player. Into another Savannah. Yeah, I mean, from looking at our Stoneblade player's hand, it, it really does not look like he has very much going on at all. He has, well, it looks like two Force of Wills and a, and a Swords to Plowshares, which may buy him a little bit of time, but in the long run, it's not. I really feel it's not really a winning strategy. All he's really got going for himself this game is he's handling his opponent's threats, but he's not actually going to be winning any kind of game. Oh, we got a Scrib Ranger. The best it's, green two drops ever printed. game over at this point. The best green two drop ever printed, hands down. Pro Blue, flying. Right? Flying. Untap flash. A flash. Untap a creature, which does not remove it from combat. Does I, not remove it from combat. I think I've, I've said this before in other videos, but yes, it's not Maze of Ith. Well, 
It's still a very good creature. It's useful for sure, but it's not Maze of Ith. Nope. It's not Jackie Chan. It's not Maze of Ith. It can't do everything. No. It can it can hold a sword. It can't be bounced by a Jace. No. It no. can't it can't win a game on its own though. Yeah, it's just every blue player is absolute terror here. It looks like he's holding Geist of Saint Traft. You know, it really does make sense, but at first I wouldn't have seen I wouldn't have expected this card to be such an all star in this deck, but it really is great. It can just put games you just protect it for three three turns. I mean, if if your opponent's playing Fetchlands, which they should be because this is legacy, you're gonna you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of life to have a, a very well very well built mana base. Getting three hits in is really all you need to do to put away most opponents. And not to mention that his opponent is playing white, and Geist has Hexproof, as if it wasn't good enough already. It's just going to stay out on the board, and you have to handle it somehow. All he needs now is a Stoneforge and a little something to put on there. And it might be GG. The Maverick player passes a turn without playing one of the many cards in his hand. I won't... I don't understand quite why he did that. Yeah. Also, can you activate Scrib Ranger's ability to itself? Can you send it back to your hand? You will. You return a forest to untap target creatures. So. Okay, right, yeah. Okay, I was thinking of, um, what's that card in Combo Elves that does that? Is it, um, oh, we have Wirewood Symbiote? That is it, yeah. Okay. Alright, so we have an Aven Mind Sensor. Well, he hardcasts Force of Will to... Ooh, that's good. Something that a lot of people don't realize, you can hardcast Force of Will. And when you do it, you really should feel like a boss, because that's a ballsy move. Stick your tongue out a little bit, rock back and forth. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and GP Orlando. Oh man, I was playing against a combo player in Modern, and every time he got his, his Deceiver combo off, Deceiver, Splinterton combo, he would rock and lick his lips so excitedly. It was enough to where I sold my modern deck on the spot. Well, and then I built another legacy deck. Just like, the, the visage of this man rocking back and forth and just licking his lips so happy that I infinite it! I infinite! I have infinite guys! It's just, I, I can't handle it. So we have a, <laughs> looks like, back, back to our game, which is really relevant at this point. <sighs> Nice thing about that Scrib Ranger is since Geist is a blue creature, it can just hold that Geist off all day long. He's still taking the four damage from the Angel, but... Uh, four is better than six, I suppose. That's true. So we have a Jite on a Stoneforge. We he shortcutted to uh, get that Jite because the opponent has no cards in hand. Oh, yep. one card in hand, one card in hand. But he's tapped out. He can't really do anything. Nope, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to get there. Squid Ranger, attack Squid in. Ranger hits for one. And Noble Hierarch. Yep. I don't know, I think you should have played that pre-combat to have that extra one damage in. Oh, off the Exalted. Off I the Exalted that. trigger. That's true. Yeah, I guess it looks uh, kind of bad. Get better at your deck, guy. Force of Will and a Swords of Plowshare is not bad. But not good enough, I don't think. Since he only has five lands, he only he can only do one of those this turn. Yep. Oh, we have the angel token. I hear that's the rare one in Innistrad. I've heard so. Is it actually worth anything? A few dollars. Because I know I know worm coil tokens are like three apiece. And it's gonna swords noble swords oh, the scrib ranger. swords the scrib ranger. It's gonna two for one in a sense now because he. Tried to kill off his Geist with uh, the Stoneforge, but now that uh, the Scrib Ranger's not there for combat damage to actually be dealt, the Geist slips to lives see another day. There's to spawn another angel. Spawn another angel. I don't understand why the Scrib Ranger went to the graveyard, though. It should be exiled. Yeah, well, you know, these guys. These guys that play the game, you know. So we have a little bit of thinking here. Oh, and the angel goes away too, just in case you didn't know that. How good would that card be if it didn't? Oh my god, it'd be, it'd be insanely broken. And Much more than it is already? Yeah, right? So we have a Jite, Quasali Prime Mage, and a Dryad Arbor. Busy turn. Looks like he's almost telling his opponent... Go ahead, swing in with that, uh... Come at me, bro! Swing in with that Geist again. Yo, that angel. Mm. 
it's uh, worth noting that our Maverick player is sitting at seven life, so... Yeah, he better do something quick. He He's on a clock. Yeah, and it looks like Stoneblade is at, what, 18? Stoneblade is at 16 life. 16? Yeah, oh, not... I don't know, man. Really, what could save him at this point, I wonder? Well... Because he can't really remove Geist. He can't it has kill Geist, only in combat, which means he's going to be taking at least another four damage. Right, he's going to get... Angel. Yeah. Well, he... Looks like that, uh... Kasali Prime Mage accomplished what it was trying to do. It yeah. Got him from moving into the combat stuff. So we have Dryad Arbor holding a GT. Picking up a... Picking up a GT. Swings with Tree Man holding a... A metal pole here. You know, some players are not as observant and, uh... Would just block immediately with that Geist, seeing it's a... It's a 1-1 one -one creature. However, it is getting the double exalted from the... Noble Hierarch and the Solly Pride Mage. Yeah, here that's good sometimes. He's going to switch. Can you imagine if guys had flying too? Oh, man. What ghost doesn't fly though? I don't really get it. Uh, right? I mean, ghosts, he's, they, he's just they, walking around. Yeah, he's just walking around on his feet spectrally. You know? He's not going to pick him up. <laughs> but What's then, that angel but doing? then, but then, you think the angel could pick him up with it and fly it to combat? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's just, I don't know. Maybe it's like the Ghost of Christmas Past where he has a bunch of chains and shit. You know, maybe that's why he can't fly. You know? <laughs> that's that's what I'm going with. Uh, so we have a long... Our uh, Stoneblade player has drawn Oblivion Ring. Which is... I hear that's good too. Very, very good. If he, uh, if he uses it right, he can probably just put this game away on, uh, on attacks. Um, he, he almost, he's targeting the, uh, the pride mage, the pride mage, which, I mean, he kind of has to, in one sense or another, because, Oh, he's gonna put it away right here, though. Yeah. Well, you put his opponent to one. Wait, guys, well, wait a no, second, no, 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 wait no. a minute. <laughs> Will you block Geist? If he blocks Geist, he's gonna just pump his mistress factory with the other one, and that's yeah. lethal. Yeah, I mean... He, I mean, that's we're also not concerned the fact that he does have GTA counters on it. He can just remove those any time to gain life. That's true, too. Yeah, another another great part about GTA is... It you does can, it all. You hit it once, and you can just not die forever. Like, if you got a Bitter Blossom and a GTA, you just hit him for one every turn there's and just no, not die forever. There's no hidden quit in that equipment. It just goes and goes. I know. It's great. It's great. Really great. Especially when you have opponents that have one life for, like, ten turns, and they just refuse to die. It's great. Yeah. Swords and Angel. Swords and Angel. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how how much I like that because you're. All, I guess. I guess his life total is kind of tight at this point because at this point, if, I think he, if he exiles the, um, I guess it's a matter of where he's blocking. He's removing both counters, which it's not really going to do anything. It's just going to almost. He's he better off just gaining the life. Yeah. Because he's he's taking more damage this way. I, I think. I think I would have preferred just uh, exiling the. Uh, the Mishra's Factory with the Swords to Plowshares, uh, right. gaining the four life to prevent the Angel and just taking the two damage. I could see that. Although, like, maybe scrambling because his life total is so low. Yeah. Or maybe he's just bad at the game. I don't know. Possibility. <laughs> no, that's not true. We have quite a few featured matches with the same Maverick player here, and he's proven himself time and time again. So it looks like there are... We got a Birds of Paradise... I'll block the angel token. Yep. Oh no. Bird with a GTA oh, in its beak. Oh. What are we doing here? I wonder how the bird can carry the GTA because I'm I'm sure it weighs more than it, right? Well I mean what we don't know, uh, I mean what's know. the what's the weight of an Afri what you, what, what's, what, what's, what? <laughs> What's the weight of an African swallow? Uh, I mean, really, is it more than a coconut? I wonder. I'm not sure. I don't know if a coconut's more than a jite, though. I don't know. I don't know how much a jite. Where'd weighs. you get those coconuts? Found them. <laughs> so we still have swords in hand from our stumbly player here. Yeah, I don't know. Looks like they're kind of weighing their options at this point. Well, let's see. I, swords. He swords the birds. He's going to go to... Well, he doesn't get any life off it. Nope. 
He could potentially put his opponent to... Looks like he just kills his opponent here. Yeah, yep. that's, that's his game well, right there. He could have if he'd attacked with his... Uh, Mistress Factory. His Mistress Factory. He just didn't do it, yeah. But he's, instead, he's making this game last at least one more turn. Longer than it needs to be, really. Yes. Although, you know... Well, he does have one... He does have. He did have one wasteland open, but. The, but really, what can he do at this point? If yeah, he could have attacked with both factories and just put away the game. No, I mean, as far as our Jute player, I, I mean, our Maverick player, it's too late now. I mean, he has Knight of the Reliquary, which is great. Would have been great two very, turns ago, though. Very good. Yeah. It. Uh, I, I think that. I think that he could live another turn though easily. I mean, he just he gets another uh, Jute hidden there, gets up gets up to six life. Yeah, that's Knight's, true. Knight's holding back the fort. He takes the angel hit. He's just he's back to square one, but he has a knight on the board. That's true. Yeah, he can just stall and then get there with with knight, which is not bad at all. No. Oh. Dang. Another reason why GT is the best equipment of all time. It is. Hands down over anything. A lot of people try to debate between fire and ice and GT. I say GT every time because of this kind of shit that's happening right now. So we pass it the turn. Batter we skull. Do a batter skull. Which he'll have to hard cast, which is fine, really. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like it's kind of going back and forth for both our players. Although, what would the stats on Knight of the Reliquary be at this point? Well, you can't see our opponent's, the Maverick player's graveyard at this point. It looks, uh... But it's probably like I guess I want. I guess it's probably about a six six or something. I'd say it's not some Super Saiyan three shit at this point. Super so Saiyan three. Wasteland, a Mistress Factory. Are there any uh, Super Saiyan girls? I know neither Elkar is a girl. <laughs> is it a girl? I it, heard it I, is a girl. I heard in Spanish it's actually like the male translation though for um, the male version. I don't know. I and and someone tried to tell me that it says cowboy in Spanish, but I'm pretty sure that's wrong. Well, it looks like the. It says caballero, I think, right? Like, I haven't seen it. So we have a scoop I'll take your word from Maverick. <laughs> and we go Maverick to, scooping. We go to game three. We have our third and final round, the showdown between Stoneblade and Maverick. <clears throat> really great matchup, good interactions to watch. Two very good top tier legacy decks. I always enjoy watching these uh, these fair decks interact with each other because it's it's much more uh, much more entertaining than just watching a combo deck play against uh, play against something like Maverick, which they're really on, only they have only very few cards that actually interact like. First game, there's dead cards like Swords of Plowshares, Mother of Runes is not really doing anything. This is you're actually watching a game. You're watching two players play with each other, whereas a combo player is just really masturbatory. They're just playing with themselves the whole time. Much like Dredge. Much like Dredge. It doesn't do anything until like 20 turns later. It but it's cheap. It's cheap. Cheap and easy, just how I like them. First turn, Mom. Let's go. It's a very good play. Yep. Drawn into Jace the Mind Sculptor. Hopefully he won't exile this one away and actually use it because I think it would be a powerhouse in this matchup. Flooded Strand. And really, from the looks of his hand, I would wait to crack it at this point. 
Yeah, he has. Unless he does another first turn brainstorm, which I would really not advise. Well, we have... Oh, Gattatee's very good here. Um, oh baby, no. I chase. would. I would definitely. I would, fetch. I would definitely brainstorm in response, trying to find a force of will because because he has two on the bottom right there, so we know he's going to be yeah. able to protect it with his mother of runes and every every force of will, Jace, Elspeth, everything after this point is dead because he cannot cast it. That's true. He cannot even force of will again. Yep, Gaddick T is just a real killer for this deck. It'd be a shame to watch. Well, not it would, it would, not really a shame. It would just be just an absolute horror story. I think. Oh man, so we have brainstorm. Does it resolve? He has. That's kind of funny. Force of will. I do believe the Maverick player uh, took out his force of wills from this matchup. <laughs> I mean, I would. You know. I, I do. Force of will. Don't do it. Don't put it Jace hurts, out. Don't. But, oh, oh, Snapcaster. All right. Oh, thank God. I would have been very upset. I, um, I'm i not sure what the rest of his hand is. If he's if he's a little light on lands, which it looks like he it is, like I, might, I might have exiled the Geist. I can see the Geist. Although, Although, he probably wouldn't after the way it got there in the last game. Yeah. I mean, if you come off a, a win like that where it pretty much single-handedly got there, I, I would feel less than inclined. It's much less of a clock in this game because he can just hold it off with the Mother of Runes. He already knows he's going to have the Mother of Runes. Yeah. Mother of Runes plus, oh, like a two-power toughness creature just like that, Geist is not getting through. Right, exactly. Where well, at this point, he would actually need Jace a lot to get there. One card that I haven't seen uh, in these games, which I'm not sure of the of the Stoneblade player's sideboard, but Wrath of God is a card that I would really like to have in against this deck. And you just let them overcommit, and then just set them back to square one. Much much more than uh, much more than uh, Force of Will, which was a necessity in uh, against that Teague. But yeah, definitely. And we have a third turn Geist, which is great, as always. And he is holding a Wrath of God in his hand. Yeah, I guess I missed that. <laughs> yeah. Although, really, I would have I would have waited to drop that Geist then if I was holding the Wrath of God. Unless he's really concerned. He doesn't have that fourth land, which is, might be the reason he did that. He's not sure when he's going to hit it. He, he, he can't really risk putting himself back a turn without playing a spell at this point. If he... Uh, he Wrath of Gods, he can just follow it up with a Planeswalker, which is better. Which better is fine. Than a yeah, it's really great. Especially a Planeswalker that protects itself like Jace. Which really, I feel like any Planeswalker that can protect itself is among the highest tier of Planeswalkers. Much like the new Soren, which is seeing a little bit of debate here on its actual usefulness. I like him. I think he would be great in, in Legacy. I think he would fit right into um, Black White, uh, Stone Blade decks, those kind of builds. Um, just like Elspeth, except you get lifelink. You put a sword of war and peace in that, you're going to gain a ton of life. That is true. I'm excited, and, and I think it's pretty much fair that his price is as high as it's being speculated at, is considering how useful I think he'll be. Looks like our, uh, our player Greenstone for three, and in response, we have a Brainstorm. Snapcaster Brainstorm. Yes, sir. But then that leaves him tapped out. He drew a mana leak, but... Oh well. Tough tits, bud. I like how the Maverick player has organized the stack. It makes makes things much much cleaner. Yep, visual stack. It's good. It's good to have it. And he's gonna have to say the thing he does not want to have to say ever when playing a blue control deck. It resolves. Although, in in all fairness to this blue white build, um, at least it's not land still. I mean, yeah, you still get to, you get to play some cards. Oh God, we have Knight of the Reliquary, which is at this point it looks like it would be a a three three, uh, maybe a four yes, four. Yes, I believe it's a three three. Yeah, which is not bad. So um, thus, the Maverick player sees that the Stoneforge player has missed a land drop at this point. I. I would think he should capitalize on that if he's able to untap with the Knight of the Reliquary and just wasteland him out of this game. Yeah, wasteland would be very, very good at this point. Because that'll keep him at two, and I think the curve in that deck is actually pretty high, right? Three yeah, and four. Yeah, there's a lot of three and fours. I mean, Snapcaster two is not doing what you want it to do. 
Well, I mean, exactly. You you would be flashing back maybe a swords, you know, which is not bad, but it's not quite enough. Although, how do you feel about mana leak in this build? I don't. I, I would rather have spell snare to be honest. Most of the time, um, in this build, it's in place of counter spell, which most of the time is going to be doing the same thing. Yeah. Because it's such a mana tight format that paying three mana might as well just say counter target spell. That's true. Then if you're in two colors, I could see that taking that over counter spell. If you don't have, if for some strange, unforeseen reason, you don't have two blue available. Of you know, note, um, the stone blade. I'm I'm fairly certain the stone blade deck is playing the spell snares. It just in hasn't addition. seen them. Oh, in, in addition, it the counter sweep for this deck is uh, usually four force of will, four spell snare, and then two uh, less less stable uh, counter spells, which in this case are mana leaks. Sort of like a, the B-roll of, yes. uh, of counters. <laughs> so we have two swords. And we have... So I haven't seen that Jace yet. He hasn't hit the fourth land. Yes, and, I, I think this. I think the Maverick player should be uh, wastelanding him out of this game at this point. But Yeah, I don't know. He looks like he's going to try to... Swords the Snapcaster here, which is going to get mana leaked. He's going to mana leak it. you got to get value out of that mana leak while you can. Oh, he has another swords. He said, ah, oh, no, I got this. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Really not a big deal. That so one resolves. It resolves. He had to say it. Every time a blue player says it resolves, God kills a kitten. You know, I bet he's just itching a wrath of God at this point. We have knight blocking Geist, it looks like. Oh, man. I hope he's searching up a wasteland with that... Uh... Neither Reliquary Trigger. Yeah. I would. I mean, why wouldn't you? And he's Maze not. Myth. Oh. Well, okay. he's, he's saving for life, but uh, at this point, his life total isn't very isn't very relevant. He has he's sitting at a very healthy twenty life. You can't. He's sitting much better than that. And uh, I don't know. I, I think I'd rather just just win the game with some wastelands. But. Yeah. I mean. Maze of Ith is still in the long run. If you if you're expecting maybe a long game, I could see getting the Maze of Ith right away. Well, here's the thing. I mean, he knows his knight's gonna live another turn. He knows if he does if he kills his opponent's land here mid combat, whatever he has in his hand, nothing's gonna. He sorts his own angel there. I mean, he wants to gain some of the life. Maybe. I mean, I guess he figures at this point that it's a dead card. Yeah, I don't. Uh, know. With the with the mother of runes on the table. Yeah, but the angel has flying. I mean, but, nothing else in the Maverick build has flying except Scrib Ranger and and even Mind Sensor. Well, Mind Sensor. I guess he was using it as a almost as a healing salve at this point. <laughs> the best one the, for three. When Swords of Cloud oh, is oh bad, it's still a healing Dude, salve. Drew, so who drew and the short end of the stick on that one, man? When naturally, they out one naturally drew the wasteland there. Yeah. Yeah. The. Uh, oh my God. Seemed very good. I I think. I think I'd almost just wait off another turn and just get another wasteland. Yep. Back to that one for three, man. I'm uh, I'm personally I'm personally a big fan of just putting opponents off their research. Well, oh, well, oh, well. you can untap it with a maze after combat damage. Oh done. my god, it's vigilance! It's, it's happening! It's vigilance. You know what's even greater? Scrib Ranger? No, no, no. Uh, Sword of Feast and Famine with Maze of Death. That's very good. You can respond to the trigger and untap it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I've just been advised that you can't do that. I'm an imbecile. Never mind. I wasn't aware of that. I thought, I thought, I absolutely thought you oh, could. Looks like the stone blayer's scooped. Yep. I mean, when, when else Rightfully was so. Yep. He was stuck on three lands there for a good amount of the match. It's never fun. Yep. And there you have it. Maverick takes it 2-1 over Stoneblade. An, an interesting matchup. Thanks for watching.